Hello readers, I'm Amy here today with the behind the booktube tag. I've put a lot of work in this. I've been filming kind of here and there, so as I'm filming other videos or editing other videos or thumbnails, I've been trying to take a little bit of time to film then as well or to have an extra camera around so I can really kind of walk you through the process of how I make a video. Also, the questions for the behind the booktube tag I have purposely put out of their original order so that I can bring you along on this journey with me from the beginning of the editing process to the end for me. So here we go, and I hope you enjoy this. So when it comes to scripting, short answer, I don't do it. Long answer, I've done it every now and then. There was a time when I organized my reviews by premise, plot, world building, and character. I don't do that anymore, but it was a nice way to kind of collect my thoughts. For the Margaret Atwood reading that I'm doing for what the book club read with Victoria, um, I'll do book predictions and I'll write down like, this is what the book's about, and kind of examine it myself beforehand and be like, do I or do I not think that I will like this book? Here you can see some more of the ideas that I've come up with and just written down my thoughts. So this is pretty much the extent of my scripting work. Scripting to me, for a lot of videos, you can kind of tell when people are scripting because they just sound really stilted and robotic, and I want to sound more natural. So I'll write down my ideas, but I won't give myself an exact dialogue. Equipment that I use includes my Canon EOS M50 camera. I got this for six or seven hundred dollars in a video kit. I love that I can flip the screen around so I can see what I'm doing while I'm filming. Whenever I first started my booktube channel, I was using my Google Pixel 2, which had a good camera but really poor sound quality. And here we have the Rode microphone that came with my camera. My only issue is that it sometimes stutters when I start recording, which I've heard is likely due to the coiled cord rather than having a straight one. Next question is, do I use any additional equipment? And I do. This is actually the first time that I'm using this particular glowy microphone. My husband got it for me whenever we were trying to fix my audio issues. Unfortunately, it will not hook up to my phone. This is a Google Pixel 2 and it only has one output thing that will only plug into a USB-C, which most things are not. So I have like this extra piece that connects to it uh, to connect to other things. And maybe that's why it wasn't working with my phone. I don't know. But I have this voice recorder app opened up on my husband's PC because the computer is here. This is our kind of mutual desk. And we're going to see how this turns out. Besides that, I have my camera stand. I only have one and I can switch the top for phone and camera. Um, I should probably get another one for my phone eventually, but this is what I have. When filming, I typically do one take in that I will sit down at the camera and answer all of the questions or talk about my topic all in one sitting. But for actually restating things, I do that a lot. I will start my intro and start stuttering through my beginning and then I'll pause, I'll take a breath, maybe get a drink of water, and then I will start from the beginning again if I have to. I don't usually stop the camera at this time, I just take a second to myself. My video editing software is Adobe Suite, so I use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Premiere Pro. When it comes to Photoshop and Illustrator, you can find some really amazing videos on how to use these with Skillshare. If you're using the Adobe platform, I highly recommend getting a year subscription to Skillshare. This is not an ad. I do not get paid by Skillshare in any way. I just got them because I saw other people advertising them, and I'm here to say if you're using Adobe, it's worth it. For Adobe Premiere Pro, however, there are not a ton of great videos on Skillshare that I've found, so for that, I use YouTube. Um, I can leave some sources that I have up on the screen here and down in the description below. I really love watching the YouTube videos to find out different editing techniques like video transitions, how to work a little better with sound. I don't really do a ton with sound. I'll use websites for little sound bites like 
say bells or clapping or booing if I want some sound effects, but I don't really do much with sound. It's not my favorite part. I do love the visual effects of editing though. I have so much fun with it. So highly recommend checking out different learning platforms and resources and really just taking your time to learn some different editing tricks and use what you have. I'm also getting a really great discount on Adobe right now because I'm studying graphic design and media arts, so I get a student discount, and instead of paying $52 a month, I am now paying about 20, and it's amazing. Now when it comes to music, currently I am using the audio library on YouTube, and here I'm going to walk you through how I use the music because it was a little bit of a learning curve. So when you use things like the audio library and there are other, there are other free forms of music on YouTube, you pick the video that you want by listening to the music that you like, scroll down to the bottom, they will have a link for download. I typically go through my Spotify, I find it's just easier. So usually on audio library, it has that big screen come up. You go to the little download cloud and you're just going to walk through and use Spotify, give Spotify permissions. Again, this is the way I do it. You can also go through SoundCloud, but I just find Spotify simpler. It doesn't always download on the first time I click it. Sometimes I have to give permissions to whatever artist I'm using, but that's fine. It hasn't affected my Spotify in any way. Right here, it downloaded right away. So I go ahead and move it over to the specific booktube folder that I have because I need to keep my stuff organized. And I have a material section where I keep my social media info, where I keep my music, just things that I use in pretty much every video and store it there so it's really easy to find. And from there, I just pop it into the Adobe platform. Then you want to make sure to go over to your YouTube studio and whatever video you end up uploading, or if you use the same music in every video, you want to go over to upload defaults and make sure to take the information from under the video that they want you to share on your video. And you want to copy and paste that on to your upload defaults or into the description of the specific video that you are using the music for because you want to make sure to credit the artist who gave you access to that music. For thumbnails, I use Adobe Photoshop. I have it to edit a lot of my photos, so I figured I'd use it for my thumbnails too. A lot of people actually use Canva. It's a free app. It's really simple to use for video editing. I know a lot of people have the Apple Macintosh, so they will use iMovie. I don't know what the PC equivalent is for that, but you can always Google a bunch of programs as well. For my thumbnails, I like to sharpen up myself and then blur and desaturate my background a little bit so that I can pop out of the photo. And then I use kind of a masking technique. I don't make an actual mask, which is where you carve out a part of the picture and take out the rest of it. I just highlight myself and then I copy and paste and that way I create a second layer onto this, but I go ahead and do a colored background to match my outfit to just kind of add lots of pops of color and make my video lists on YouTube really colorful. And then I will lower the opaqueness so you can still see my background while having the color. I do my white borders just because I think it looks nice. Down below I will also link the Skillshare teacher that I really love to use. I like his voice, I like his teaching style, I highly recommend him. For the last question, what makes a good video from a production standpoint? I have a lot of thoughts on this. I have the more talked about thoughts and I have the less talked about thoughts. So let's stop. start with the more talked about. Audio. Audio is huge. Now I do follow a deaf YouTuber who makes sure to have closed captions since I don't really speak sign at all and it's nice to have those closed captions so I can tell what he's saying. But if you speak in your videos, you must be audible. If you are talking and you don't have closed captions and I can't understand half of what you're saying, I will not watch your video. I, I just, I won't do it. I can't understand any of the information that you're trying to get across for me. 
And that was a big problem that I feel like I had whenever I started doing my videos. You could hear me, but you had to turn up the computer the whole way because for whatever reason, I could not get the audio working well with my phone through any microphone that I used. So do what you can to make yourself audible if you have to speak up louder, if you have to change what room you're sitting in, if you have to explore microphones, make sure that we can hear you. That's, that's a big one that a lot of people talk about. Now, the things that people don't discuss as much, but that's a big issue for me. Not, maybe not a big issue, but it's an aesthetic thing. I'm really big on aesthetics. Now, I have always been an artist. I've always been a creator. I grew up drawing constantly. I eventually got into painting. Now that I am post-college and starting up college again, of course, I'm making videos and exploring photography. And I love crafting. Crafting's a big hobby of mine. I'm just always creating something. I've taken a lot of art classes and aesthetics mean a lot to me. Now, you don't have to have a perfect camera with a perfect clear picture. It can, it can be grainy. You know, it, d it depends on the quality of your camera. That's, that's fine. What I'm talking about is your framing. Framing is a big thing for me. For one thing, not a requirement, but something that I prefer is if you're having a booktube channel, try and have some books in your background. Try and have some bookshelves in your background. I will link a video up above that I did on bookshelves. I've actually done, I think, two videos, but I will go ahead and link my first one where I talk about really cheap bookshelf options as well as how to make your own bookshelf. If you can't afford a bookshelf, Maybe you can afford some items to help build a bookshelf. Whenever we were moving around a lot, I used the cardboard boxes that my books were in, flipped them sideways, and there was my bookshelf. But try to have some books in your background or at least make it look nice. I don't wanna see a bunch of piled blankets and laundry and pillows and your entire kitchen in your background. You don't want the background to be too busy unless it's something like this that your video is actually focused on. If your background is really busy, that's really distracting to the eye and the person is less focused on you and more focused on what's behind you. So that's a big thing. Also, when it comes to framing is where you are positioned in your video. This is how I like to be positioned. I like myself either in the middle or off to the side if I have some thing that I'm gonna insert with my computer later, like a book cover. I like having part of my torso and most, if not all, of my head. Sometimes I'm a little higher up, I kind of cut off the top of my head, it happens. But I see a lot of videos, here I'm actually sitting on this chair, I see a lot of videos where people are down here and their camera is focused way up here and there's no reason for them to be down here, this is just where it is. But that is why we have camera stands. If you have a selfie stick, if you have a little tripod, if you have some books that you stack up and lean your phone against, something. But make sure that you are not way down here because framing and aesthetic wise, it looks really weird. I'm also not trying to sound like a total brat. I'm just giving you artists perspective here. And also, be mindful that these are my opinions, and even if you throw almost all of my advice out the window, if you read books that I'm into, I'll probably watch you anyways. There is also one more thing that I want to talk about before I forget. Whenever it comes to audio and aesthetics is the way you are cutting your video. So if I can, I try to cut out a lot of my so's and ums because I realize I say so and um a lot. It's a terrible habit. No public speaking class has gotten rid of my so's and ums. But that said, it's okay if you say so and um a lot, but there was one booktuber that I watched and I had to unfollow almost immediately that I started following her because I, I, I followed because I liked the books that they were reading, but once I really started hearing their videos, it drove me bonkers. They would say, say you have a sentence, they would cut like every third word. So you would see just all these, all these weird cuts in their videos and it made it really jumpy. It made the sound really funky and it just wasn't something that I was able to listen to. So if you have to say something over and over and over again to your camera until it sounds right, do that, please. Take your time to repeat yourself as much as you need to before you get that filming section right because you don't wanna be cutting 
your video at every third or fourth word to get your point across. That also makes the pacing of the video really weird. So just please restate yourself if you have to and then cut the video accordingly. So that is what I have for this behind the booktube tag. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye friends.